So I've been slowly building and maintaining uh, now over two miles of trails in our backyard for dirt biking and mountain biking riding. And I got to say, I have a lot of respect for those that do trail maintenance because it's a lot of work. So I want to show you my favorite tools uh, based on a budget because I don't like to spend a lot of money uh, that have helped me make maintenance easier. And when I'm trying to build or maintain trails, I try to do as little cutting as possible. And to start out, I like to have a set of gloves to wear because my hands are they're baby hands and they uh, can get cut up really easily. So just some cheap mechanic gloves or if you're doing like a lot of harder work with like thorns and stuff, having some thicker leather gloves is really nice. And then besides a, an old handsaw, uh, one of my first tools is this pair of loppers. And this alone, you could do a lot of trail work, building and maintenance with it because you can do thick thorns, branches that are in the way, or you can uh, even do like a, a small tree that up to like two inches. So takes very little effort to cut these. This is about one inch and it doesn't take much to cut that up. Yeah, you can do two inches if you kind of work your way around it. If you don't have uh, a saw, this can get the job done if you absolutely need it to, but it's definitely harder once you get over one inch in diameter. Yep. And then my next favorite tool, which is also affordable, uh, is this Corona folding saw. And you just press this button, fold it right out. If I'm wearing jeans or if I have pocket, I can just shove it right in. It's super nice, even, even if I'm using the e-bike to go out in the woods, I can just throw it in my pocket and I hardly even notice it. When the loppers were really hard to do on this right here, you can cut this very quickly. So anything that is like one to six inches, pretty easy to do. I've even done something bigger than this is probably, I don't know, at least 10 inches around <laughs> when I didn't have the chainsaw with me and I still got it done. <clears throat> it just took probably uh, at least five minutes, 10 at the most, but you can get it done um, with this because this is really sharp. I've cut myself on it. I've had it for quite a few years now and it's still surprisingly sharp. So high quality. I highly recommend having one of these if you don't have a chainsaw or if you just want something really lightweight in your backpack. Then for doing thick brush and kind of clearing the trail because we got a lot of thorns and thick brush, especially uh, after June in the summer, uh, everything grows out really thick. So I got this on Amazon, I don't know, probably seven, eight years ago. Uh, pretty cheap. It's got a lot of power and uh, this metal blade really cuts through this, the thick stuff really nice. Starts easy. It's been super reliable other than uh, this started leaking. So I just bought a new tank for like 10 or 15 bucks. No big deal. Uh, this is starting to come a little bit loose, but overall it still works. I haven't even replaced the blade, but if you got a relatively short section of thorns and just thick brush, that's like an inch and smaller, this can cut through it pretty nice. But if you're using it for more than like 15, 20 minutes at a time, it gets kind of heavy, uh, especially if you don't have a shoulder harness. So that's why when I was doing maintenance this year, uh, we had a lot of weeds and stuff on the trail, so I switched to our regular uh, gas two-stroke trimmer uh, because it was strong enough to get most of it. And it, it weighs like half, half or less than half of the weight of this brush cutter. And then to help even more with the strain on my neck because I get uh, inflammation built up really easily. I got this nice Makita uh, shoulder harness that works surprisingly well. It's not the cheapest thing, but I'd rather spend a little bit more. I think it was like 40, 40 some bucks. Um, but to me, it's worth it because I spent like 12 hours just doing two miles of trails of weed whipping. And this really saved my neck and shoulders because it is not fun <laughs> when uh, my neck and shoulders don't feel good. And if you're doing trail maintenance in the woods where leaves fall uh, in the fall and they cover the trail, 
It may be fine for you, but if you have other people, other friends that want to ride your trails, it's really hard for them to see, plus you don't have as good attraction. So I wanted to get a backpack leaf blower, but those are like two to three times the price as a cheap one. This cheap Hitachi one that I got off of Amazon several years ago has been awesome. Super reliable, always starts. Uh, I think I had to replace the fuel line this year. Other than that, no problems. Very powerful and uh, yeah, just spend few hours leaf blowing two plus miles of trails like once a year and maybe twice and good to go and then when you can't reroute a trail and you actually absolutely have to cut up a tree you pull out the chainsaw whether it's a, a gas one or electric one this works great it's just really hard to haul on your dirt bike if you don't have a chainsaw mount and if you're using a chainsaw make sure you wear gloves uh, glasses or goggles, uh, safety shield, and uh, some chainsaw bib or pants. These ones from Husqvarna uh, are really nice. They're super easy to put on and uh, I haven't had to use them yet, but I'm not going to use the chainsaw without them because my dad was using the chainsaw many years ago. He nicked his leg and it started bleeding out and uh, thankfully he's still here. I think it was cutting that tree or one of the trees right here actually there's links to these tools uh, in the description below and if you want to see uh, the more in action or if you want me to talk about trail building and stuff like that let me know in the comments below or you can check out my other videos on how to become a better safer rider i'm kelly faker from motocross hideout learn more ride more so that you can stay safe and have fun for many years to come